Today I'm working on a new watercolor palette that is a Maiden metal folding box style palette. It comes with 48 half pans or 24 full pans and I went ahead and ordered the box with 48 half pans because I have a lot of watercolors. And I also ordered 48 additional half pans to see if I could fit more than 48 into the palette box. I am just going to be putting Daniel Smith watercolors in here. I have a lot of them and I use more than 48 on a regular basis. So I'm going to try to fit as many as I can into this box. Right now I'm just writing on the sides DS, which is short for Daniel Smith, and then the name of the color on the other side of the pan. Of the, uh, the pan. Since I'm labeling these, I'll be able to find the pan that I want if I'm mixing a certain color, or I can use them to label my swatches that I'll put on the inside of the box so I know what color is where. And it also will help me when I need to refill the pans to make sure I'm putting the right color in it. Luckily, ordering 48 extra half pans gave me enough pans that I could put all of my Daniel Smith colors into a pan. I prefer to use my watercolors dry like this, but I don't really like pre-made pans either. There's something I prefer about the consistency of dried from the tube paint over pans that were manufactured that way. I don't know why, but I feel like this paint works better for me. So this is how I prefer my watercolor. At this point, I'm not doing this in any particular order. These are just the recent purchases that I've made. So these were already on my desk and I wanted to put them into pans first. This can be kind of messy, so you may have to wash your hands, but luckily since it's watercolor, it will come off pretty easily. My fingers did get sore from unscrewing all the little caps though. So now that I have all of those filled up, oh, not quite, one more. Two more. How many more? Three more. Now I'm just gonna kind of fondle them a little bit because that's, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm a professional, trust me about these things. So now I'm back to just writing labels on little plastic boxes until I die, of old age probably. And I'm gonna be here for a while, so we'll probably just skip ahead on some of this because only an insane person would want to watch all of this. Skipping ahead here, it looks like I've already put a few of my blues into pans and I've already done all the reds it looks like. This is the step where you're supposed to get paint all over your hand and then look at it like it's not paint and something really really disgusting. But deep down inside you're actually kind of happy because it feels really good to have paint all over your hands and you're a sicko. In this step you need to dump your paint all over your desk. This is just, it looks like red, so maybe I spoke too soon, but the goal here is to make other people jealous about how much paint you have, so you want to just kind of dump it on your desk like you don't really care that much. Now I'm going to sort them all out like I actually do care, and I'm not a totally disorganized monster of a person. I actually can't tell. Are these reds? Are they violets? The colors on the tubes don't mean anything. So I'm just going to keep going here, filling up pans like a maniac over and over and over again. Okay, this part is important. I was trying really hard to get the paint out of this little tube and I decided to use these pliers that I have. I think they're for jewelers or something. They are totally round and don't have any flat spots. These ended up being vital to getting the pans into the container. I'll do a more detailed video later about how I choose what colors to put in my palette. But in general, I think it's really important to check the pigment numbers on the side of your paints 
And make sure that the paints you're putting in your palette are not a mixture of a bunch of different pigments. The problem with that is the more pigments you mix together, the muddier your watercolors will get. So if you have a limited palette and you try to use one of those colors for mixing, it could get really muddy and it won't look very good. So if you can find a pigment that just looks like the color that all those mixed colors are trying to emulate, then that would probably yield a brighter, more luminous watercolor. So the next step is to get some scrap paper and start swatching all the colors that you've put into pans in order to decide which ones you'll put into your folding palette box. Unfortunately, I couldn't think of any ways to actually modify the box anymore without having to like weld it, take it apart, that sort of thing. So without having to do serious remodeling work, I couldn't make it hold more paint than, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many I ended up with. I did end up putting more in it than it was intended to have, but at this point I wasn't sure if I would get more than 48 in it. So I wanted to go through and make sure that I was picking my favorite colors out of all of my greens and my blues and my reds and so on. All these colors are more appropriate in certain situations or they work better in certain mixtures or whatever. So I wanted to make sure I had my favorite colors in the palette box at the very least. This is where those little pliers came in really handy. The paint was still wet when I started trying to put it in the box so I didn't want to stick my finger down into the pan to put pressure on it and make it pop into place. But these pliers were perfect. I could manipulate the boxes exactly how I needed to and put just enough pressure on them to make them snap in without actually like making a huge mess or breaking the box or anything like that. I think any other type of plier would be too large for this task. These just barely fit and they really came in handy later when I tried to wedge more extra paint into the box beyond the 48 colors. Skipping ahead a bit, I've now sorted out uh, what reds and which violets I want to have in the palette. Looks like I'm putting in some oranges and yellows still and kind of swatching it to figuring out um, which colors I want, what order I want them in, that sort of thing. You don't really have to do this in any particular order. Some people really want the colors to be like in the order of the rainbow or like warm to cool or whatever. I don't really care that much, but I do just pick an order that makes sense to me that I think I'll be able to remember. At this point, I had also figured out that each row that was designed to hold 12 pans would actually hold 13 if I use those little pliers to scoot everything over really flush. There are not 13 clips to hold 13 pans, but it doesn't matter with the half pans. Some of them are held in by two clips, so they're sharing a clip with another pan. It works perfectly fine. In addition to being able to get four extra pans in just by putting another one into each row, I was also able to fill the middle of the palette with pans turned sideways. I think this area is intended to hold paintbrushes, but since I don't really intend to take this anywhere like traveling or anything, I don't need that little center pocket to hold anything, so I was actually able to, using the pliers again, wedge 10 more pans into the middle of the palette. So I ended up with 14 extra pans in my palette by the time I was done. At this point, I am almost done. I'm just wedging some more colors in here and I'm about to start the middle. So you can see here, I am using the pliers to apply pressure on the sides of the other pans to push them out of the way since they're tapered and the top is wider than the bottom. The top is the only thing preventing another row of pans from fitting into that little middle section. So if you use the pliers, push them open a little bit and apply pressure to the other pans, you can actually shove them a little bit out of the way and wedge those other pans in there. I can't guarantee it will stay that way if you're traveling or something. They might fall out, but for me this worked. Once you've got them in there, you can kind of slide them down and they pretty much stay where you put them. And there is still room for some paint brushes, but you will need something to get them back out. 
For the remaining pans, I have an old Yarka St. Petersburg palette that I don't use anymore, so I figured I can get 69 half pans into it if I take out the insert that came with it. For this step, I had to count on my fingers and use the calculator on my phone because I'm terrible at math, but maybe you won't have that problem. Okay, now for the last part. I've cut out a piece of paper that will fit in the lid, and I'm going to draw a grid on it and then put swatches of paint. At this point, I realized that I failed to write anything down, so I have to remove all of the pans one at a time and read what's on the side of them and then put them back into the pan. At this point, I started to employ some really complicated math to figure out how big to make my grid before I realized that I could literally just set it on the pan and make marks where the colors were in the palette because the piece of paper is exactly the same size as the palette. Now, because I did things so complicated, and made a mistake in my measurements and my complicated math, I have to start over. So I'm making a new one. This is how you should do this if you have this kind of a palette. Don't do it the way I did it. Now just make your little grid. You don't have to use a ruler that you've had since the sixth grade, but that's what I'm going to do and make sure you get some paint all over your desk so you can get that all over your card too. That'll be awesome. Now I'm also going to write the names on here so I know what the colors are in case I need them for a special mixture. You don't have to do that. You can be a disgusting animal if you want to, but I like my palette to be organized. And I like to know what I'm doing, so I'm going to write all the names on here. I'm just kidding, of course. This is your palette and you can do whatever you want with it. Make it organized however you want it to be, or disorganized, whatever suits you. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong way to lay out your watercolor palette. Here's what my palette looked like when it was finally done. The card is really handy and it fits inside so it can go with me anywhere, and I just added a little tape to keep it in there. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you had fun.